All right. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're doing well. We've just seen the UK CPI being released, and the markets are waiting for the FOMC rates decision later tonight. So that's what we'll be looking at in this video, looking at some possible trade setups before the big news or leading up to the big news event. But first, Okay, so a big good morning, Lin Lee. How are you doing? Hey, Diana. Hope you're doing well. For everyone, if you're on the session, do drop a message and say hi. Let me know where you're joining us from. And if you have any questions at any point in time, please feel free to put it into the chat and let me know. Um, you can help me out massively by remembering to click on that like and subscribe button as well. And a big welcome to Felipe, who has just joined us as an elite navigator on the um, YouTube community membership. All right, so if you haven't already, do make sure you join that because tonight at 2 a.m. GMT plus 8, I will be going live. Um, this is for elite navigator members only, um, going live with live trading for the FOMC race decision. Um, tomorrow, I'll be going live at 7 p.m. GMT plus 8 for the BOE race decision. And then um, on Friday, we'll be going live with the BOJ race decision as well. Okay, so if you haven't already, make sure you click and join as a member. Hey, Jimmy, how are you doing? Good morning, good afternoon. All right, um, I'm wearing green. I'm hoping for the green pips to come around. So let's look into that. What has happened since the last time we spoke? Firstly, uh, just an hour ago, we had the UK CPI being released. It was a 2.2%. This is CPI year on year. It was a 2.2%. It's expected to stay at 22 and it got released at a 2.2%. As expected, as previous, which is going to give a bit of a which signals, not going to, which signals that the, um, what was I going to say? Which signals that inflation growth in the UK is stabilizing, it's not slowing down, it's stabilizing just at 2.2%, which might, which might influence, where am I? Okay, which might influence that decision tomorrow at 7 p.m. GMT plus 8. Right, we have the BOE expected to keep rates on hold at 5% with a change in the voting um, from a 0.54, that was when they cut rates from 5.25 to a 5, that's why we had a 0.54, um, expected to go to a 0.27. I think that it might influence, but it might not be enough as well. So it's on that borderline where we could hear the BOE not, well, we could see the BOE not do anything, but we could hear them talk about or comment about maybe um, rate cuts to come in the uh, near term, in the near future, just to try and bring the inflation rate down um, slightly more, right? The inflation growth slightly lower. So as a result of this 2.2%, we have seen the pound dollar. It was trading just before the news at 1.3159. It's pushed up to 1.3187. So it's pushing back up. Um, this was a trade I had from last night, selling it down, move that to the side. Now it's pushing back up again. So that's going to be quite interesting on the pound dollar. <clears throat> we'll talk more about that shortly. Um, that was what happened with just an hour ago scrolling back can i come back move back okay scrolling back um yesterday we had the claimant count number we talked about that 
um, and not much else in terms of the news, right? So what we've seen across the board was a bit of a consolidation and retracement right from the dollar index to um, the yen on the inverted head and shoulder. Even on gold, we saw it retracing back down, but it's not gone too crazy. It came back down to a or came back down or came or went up, retraced a little bit higher to a good support or resistance level. All primed, all primed right now for 2 a.m. GMT plus 8, where we have the Fed Reserve looking or anticipated to cut rates from a 5.5 to a 5.25%, a 25 basis point rate cut expected from the Fed Reserve at 2 a.m. GMT plus 8. The thing is, if you look at the CME Fed Watch 2, I had that for a while, so let's refresh that. If you look at the CME Fed Watch 2, you saw just there was 65, now it's 61% likelihood that the Fed could cut rates by 50 basis points. Instead of 25 basis points, it's pushing towards, I still call it borderline, I'll still call it a borderline, but it's pushing towards a 61% likelihood that the Fed could cut rates by 50 basis points. Like I've been saying, if they do cut rates by 25, that is going to be pretty much priced in, right? If they do cut rates by 25, it's pretty much priced in. I'm not expecting a big drop on the dollar index. Um, I'm not expecting a big weakness on the dollar. Um, but if they do surprise markets or do surprise the analysts um, and cut more than 25, cutting at 50, then we might see that spike down on the dollar that we've been talking about over the last couple of days already. It's finally coming up to not really the 11th hour, but close to that where we're coming to this rate decision from the Fed Reserve. Okay, so not much to talk about in terms of the news, right? We just had the CPI for the UK. We have Euro CPI year on final CPI year on year to be released as well. 2.2, 2.2 seems to be the number for today. Um, not expecting a big surprise here either. It doesn't seem to have too much of a impact on prices with the Euro final CPI. So I think that if you're going to be, or rather with our trades for today, anything we get into now, between now to 2 a.m. GMT plus 8 will be very short term. It'll be in, make some profits, get out. In, make some profits, get out. So that we can get to neutral, we can stay neutral before the news. Um, I might take one or two, not one or two, one speculative trade before the news. Um, if you watched the video that I did about the FOMC game plan, um, there are four approaches to it. I'll take on one trade before the news just to try and catch in anticipation of the news, try and catch a big move. And then during the news, I will be trading the reaction, the price reaction on the release. Okay, so not much to update in terms of news, but we'll, for today, we'll be looking at um, what happens or what to look at in a good news or a dollar strength scenario and a dollar weakness scenario. Sounds good so far? Um, put it into the chat if it all makes sense. And it sounds good. Now, with that said, let's look at the a dollar index. Okay, here we are. Dollar index. I've got a couple of things here going. Let's take all of that away first. So yesterday we were talking about dollar index ranging between 100.60 and 100.90. Thanks for that, Diana. Um, and I forgot, hey, Drew Marinas, how are you doing? Hey, West Stone Music, good morning. Hope you're doing well. Right, so yesterday we were talking about the dollar index ranging between 100.60 and 100.90. 
it's pretty much still in that range. It popped out of it slightly, got to 101, and then retraced back. So if I zoomed in, just to make it a bit easier to see, bring that down. Okay, take that, take that squiggly line away first. That line you see here, that's the FOMC rates decision line. Okay. Now, with the dollar sitting just below 100.90, right? Sitting below 100.90, I would say at 100.90, what we're expecting or what I'm expecting to see is that it's going to stay at this area, maybe a little bit higher, in this area, all the way to this news event, right? All the way to this news event where um, because markets are going to sit in consolidation, they're going to wait, they're going to um, be, be a bit more careful about trying to front run the news. I know there will be a little bit of front running of the news as traders and investors try to cash in, cash in on a position, on an earlier position, but I think it's going to stay along this range, right? And up to the news. What I'm thinking actually now, just a revision of the thought from yesterday and the past few days is that, you know, we've been talking about the dollar, oops, we've been talking about the dollar pushing down, all right, um, to that support level and then doing that and bouncing all around. And if we see a 50 basis points, we could see trade lower. What I'm actually thinking now is a bit, um, a bit, a bit differently, right? A bit differently. Why so? Is because if you zoom right out, okay, if you zoom right out, you see that whole trend line, this point started on the 30th of July, it's pushed all the way down. We had the trend line first, um, at that point, right? Well, we had it first at that point, then there, because of those two levels and that 61.8 level that formed nicely. Once it broke out, I adjusted it. <coughs> I adjusted it that way, and now it's all the way there. And you drag it out all the way, okay? So now, with that trend line, what I'm actually thinking is that the dollar index could actually Right, on a, um, let me do that first. On a 25, 25 or 50 basis point rate cut, right? Could do this. Sit around here. Um, I wouldn't be too surprised if the news came out. I mean, let me try and gather my thought on this. Um, I was going to say that it could test a trend line and push back down. All right, so if I'm looking at this, right, and we have that level up at 61, sit around here. Okay. A 25 basis point rate cut. If we see a 25 basis point rate cut, we could see the dollar index push up, test the trend line, and come back down again. Because that's, you know, they could do a 25 basis point rate cut. We see a price in scenario, so it pushes right back up. Um, and then they might talk it back down again, talking about you know, further rate cuts to come or data dependent or, um, you know, the, the dot plot, the, um, uh, the next rate cut, right? So what, that's what I'm looking at. Then I'm thinking that if they do a 50 basis point rate cut, then we could see it sit around there and push down to 
test, and then push right back down again. The like I was saying in the video in the YouTube channel is that the wild card, the wild card here is they could say that 50 basis point rate cut now, and that's it for the year. Right? They might have because they were planning a 50, they were planning a rate cut for this year. They might have pushed it forward and done a 50, then that's it. No more rate cuts uh, for the rest of the year. Ideally, we like one this one now and then one more towards the end of the year. But they could say, hey, 50 this time and nothing else. That would be where we'll see the dollar go this way and then right back up again that way. Back to the trend line. Okay, so I've got a lot of lines here just walking you through the thought process of how price could do um, during that news event. Um, so that's a 50 basis point rate cut and then no more rate cuts to come for the rest of the year. We'll see the dollar push back up or we'll consider it as a bit of a um, hawkish cut. Now take all that away. What we're seeing here now, now dollar still trying to push back down. I think that is going to consolidate in this area. What I would like to see, a better level that I would like to see it at will be at this point. So what I'm still going to be planning for is the dollar to consolidate. Right, dollar consolidate at 100.90, around 100.90. First, I would like to see it come down to that 100.60 level, just remaining within the range. Then, on the news release, push down a little bit further. Um, and this is entirely projecting where I think price could get to. So please remember that when it comes to news, it's a bit of a guesswork as well. Um, I'm thinking that the dollar could push lower before bouncing back up again. Okay, so I'm thinking that it will come down or bounce around here, come down to this point, test this, and then push back up again. That's kind of what I'm looking for in general. But first move is to the downside. Okay, I know it's a bit all over the place, um, but we're kind of in a bit of a um, interesting scenario right now. And also, you know, we've, I've seen um, recently, well, just this morning, I've seen a interview with Jamie Dimon. I've seen an interview with, um, what was the other guy's name? Where they basically just went, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the Fed Reserve does, whether it's 25 or whether it's 50, right? It's all about on the ground economy. It's all about the employment numbers or the unemployment numbers. It's all about the um, activity, economic activity on the ground in the US. <clears throat> the rate cut decision is really there to kind of avoid or to um, smoothen out the the possible volatility in a or the possible recessionary fear right so i'm looking at this pushing down test at 100 level and possibly bouncing back up again but first we look at that so 101 could oh needs to break 100.60 to trade down to 100 round number support. Okay, um, in this case is if it was a, no. Okay, in this case we're saying that this is if 50 basis point cut. 
if it's not a 50 basis point, if it's 25 basis points cut, then I would expect to see it bounce from 100.60 to bullish trend line. Uh, to bearish trend, I'm sorry. Okay, so take that away. Let's say this is what I, we are sitting at right now. If it's a 50 basis point rate cut, we're looking for it to come down to 106, 100.6 and push down to the 100 level. If it's a 25 basis point rate cut, same thing, I would expect that to bounce around and from there, we could see it push up towards that um, trend line. Okay, so 25 basis point, let me do that. Um, 25 basis point cut. This is my guess. And then 50, 50 basis point cut. Obviously, there are going to be a few more considerations in terms of what Chair Powell is going to say um, with the future plans, what the economic projections are going to be, what the dot plot is going to be, and more importantly, how he answers the question about the, um, whether the US economy could avoid a recession. All right, so we have the, the scenarios planned out here on the dollar index. Make sense? Put into chat, let me know. If you have an alternate view, put into the chat as well and let me know. Okay. Um, good afternoon, Augusto. How are you doing? Hey, Richard. Good morning. So now with that, it's, you know, and that's why I'm giving you the two different scenarios is because here we're thinking that, here we're thinking that um, it's a 25 basis point rate cut. Here we're thinking that it's 50. So we're coming to this two scenarios. Um, can you please move the yellow sticky bit to the left? No, I'll move the whole chart. There you go. All right, I'll update that as we go along. So that will still be something we'll look at. Okay. Um, then now we look at the Kiwi dollar. Pound dollar still pushing up. No worries, Naren. Uh, take that away. Put that in. Okay. Kiwi dollar. We're going to keep that. All right. So we were looking for that to zigzag to the upside. It didn't zigzag to the upside. Instead, it zigged to the downside and it's zagging back up. I know I'm making up words right now. But what we've seen is that that upside is still what I'm looking for now. But it's since we spoke yesterday, it's come down to test the trend line. It's bounced off the trend line. And it's pushing back up. Still looking for that 6220 level. We have that interim level there. I think that you could in this time. So yesterday we were talking about this and we were thinking that, you know, um, no big news, no big drive to push prices significantly higher. So we kept it about 50. I think that if we see a big downside, a big strength on the dollar, recovery in strength on the dollar, we could, no, not recovery. What am I talking about? Weakness on the dollar. If we see that pushing down, we could see this push right up, All right? So I would like that. And I'm thinking that you would give it a little bit more space. No, keep it there. All right, so what I'm thinking now is that before the news, we're coming very close to it. That's so I was thinking of giving a bit more space is that you could get into this and you could hold on to it. Ideally, it will push up. So ideally, it will push up, test that level before the news, and then 
on the news, it will push further to the upside. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for. Then if it comes up, you can push this to break even. You get a pretty much risk-free trade. To the upside, if that happens, if it comes back down, you got break even. So I'll keep the Kiwi dollar buy at 6220.25 and I'll revise it to 75 to the upside. Buy 6220, stop loss 25, take profit 75 to the upside. We'll say this is on DXY weakness. All right, pushing it up. Uh, yes, for sure, I can do pound cat. Not a worry. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for on the Kiwi. I like that. Then on the Aussie, same thing. We've seen that test the trend line pushing back up, still looking, it's crossing up. I like that. I'll keep that there. 6780.20 to 40 to the upside. Could you go higher? Let me check the H4. That point, let me see. Um, it could test this level. If it breaks past that point, you test this level, at, which we saw in January this year. So not unlikely, not impossible. That 61 is broken, so we can take that one away. Breaks past this point. Trend line with a quick revision. Push to the upside. So I'll still look for that. 6780, you could go as high as 70 pips to the upside. Yep. I would like this to slow down, not to jump up as quickly, right? Because you're seeing the dollar sitting right across. There's no big reason why we should see the Aussie dollar push up that much. So I would like to see it sit along there. Then you have that maybe later tonight to trade up. Okay. So 6780. Wait, wait, where am I? 67. Why did I have 6740 before? Okay, 6780. That was a typo there. 6780. Stop loss 20. Take profit 70 to the upside. Okay, again, this is on DXY weakness. Okay. There we go. Then, as we have it, Aussie Kiwi hasn't done anything. It's still holding on that trend line. It didn't break lower. Now, if you look at this, it looks like the Aussie pushing to the upside could push the Aussie Kiwi up. I'm not, we're, we're developing that idea that we're not a big fan of the Aussie Kiwi, so this will be the last week we'll have it. We might change it out later or after this week. Um, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that it's sitting right across. And if you think about it, because of that trend, the channel, it could push up to that 61.8 level and then turn back down. Right? It's in that channel. And you see that channel being respected quite well. So if it sits across and pushes up, we we'll look for it to test the top and turn back down. So what I'm looking for is it holds the level here, test this area, push up and then turn back down. Then you'll be looking at Aussie Kiwi 1.0950, stop loss very tight, no more than 20 
take profit back down to this point, about 40 pips to the downside. Not super interesting on the Aussie Kiwi. I think that the Kiwi and the Aussie, a lot more interesting, a lot more, a lot easier than the Aussie Kiwi. Okay. Then with that, looking at the pound dollar. This was a trade I did last night. Pound dollar, we were talking about it pushing down a bit of a counter trend move, right? It didn't test and reject. It sat right across and pushed down. So I saw the TSRI MACD crossing down. So I took a quick trade together with the news that we saw last night pushing to the downside, right? Um, and then now trading down so that traded down 40 pips it was out of the bollinger band got out of that that was a quick trade done set right across set right across through the night and the morning and then in the afternoon as well with the cpi number that was just released we saw the pound dollar push up okay we saw the pound dollar push up now at this point, remember we were talking about this yesterday in this area where it's tested and resisted and pushed back down. You look at it on H4 as well. All right, you zoom right out. It's a big long time ago since we got to that point on the hour on the daily time frame. This level we saw on March 2022, 22nd of March 2022. How many tools can we get? 22nd of March 2022, where it tested this point and pushed right back down. So back to the H1 again. I'm looking at this to test this area. Ideally, even test that 1.33 level. No, oh, it's a bit too far away to test 1.33. It's 1.31. 1. 1. 9 zero now. I think I would keep that view and say that pound dollar could test pound dollar could test higher and reject back down. If we see pound uh, dollar strength come back into play, right? So if we see the dollar strength come back into play or even if we see it bounce from this level back up so we might see the pound dollar push up i'll keep it as an option because of that 1.33 resistance area up here i look for it to test higher reject that point and push down so test and reject 1.32 one five no one point three two below one point three two. I think this was very similar to yesterday's view. Thirty. We know we have forty there. We have eighty back down. So test reject right back down on the pound dollar on dollar strength scenario. Okay, so test and reject of resistance area. Sell 1.32, 30 to 80 to the downside. I'll keep that as a counter trend idea. Instead of saying counter trend, I'll change this to DXY strength scenario. Okay. Test, reject, push down. I still see some upside on this just because of what happened um here right but dollar could bounce so i think that the initial what i anticipate on this is the you know initial reaction from the dollar could see the could see the pound dollar push up right or test this Come back down, test higher, and then we'll see that rejection back down again. So that's what I'm looking for on the 
pound dollar. Um, and if you look at this trend line as well, that makes sense. So test could do that. No, could do that. Test as reject. Okay, that's kind of what I'm looking for on the pound dollar if we see a big recovery in strength on the dollar index. Then on to the euro, right? It came right up. I was so keen on that. Right after our call, didn't close above, and you'll see that another reason why I didn't get into that, it was way outside of Bollinger. So I was looking at this right after our session, and I was like, okay, it's gone up, gone higher. Could it come back down and push up? So it came back down and it came all the way back down. I mean, that's it. Not going to look into that euro dollar to the upside. That took a long time, and we've been waiting for the euro dollar to break this area for a long time as well. Hasn't happened. Now, I'll drag this right across, and you look at this, and it still makes sense. On a dollar weakness scenario, we'll still be looking at 1.1145. So now it's at a resistance, right? Break is already tested. Look for it, test it, and came back down. So I'm looking for it to break above 1.1145 to trade up. I'll keep that view. Let me see. That makes sense. Yep. Okay. It's the euro is very undecided at this level, and there is a very ugly. Um, let me. Zoom in on that. And there is a very ugly head and shoulder. We have that test that way. Right? An ugly head and shoulder pattern, which, if it breaks lower, could have a big downside. Um, but I think that we already have a counter trend move, or we're already looking for a possible counter trend move on. The pound dollar. You could also do this on a euro actually. Let's look at it 1.1150. Give it a bit of space. I don't see a big upside limited to a 1.12. So you got a 25 to a 50 to the upside. Or if it takes this move and it breaks this level, you could see it trade right back down to this point. So what I mean by that is if you look at the euro below 1.111, Stop loss, you'd have a 20 pip stop loss at the very maximum. You could even go tighter. You would take profit at 30 on the 50% or a 50 at the 61.8 level, which is this whole area down here. So that actually gives us a bit of a straddle opportunity on the euro dollar head and shoulder pattern to come down or a break a continuation so it's gone up it's tested continuation to the upside i like that i like that so euro dollar we have a straddle right we straddle we can look to buy at 1.1150 stop loss 25 take profit 50 or we can look to sell at 1.1110 stop loss 20 take profit 50 to the downside 
50. To the downside. Okay, so again, remember this is what we're seeing right now. Um, things could change very quickly on release of the news on the new the rates decision on the statement that accompanies the rate decision and during the press conference as well. So stay flexible, but this is what we're seeing or what I'm seeing right now based on how prices are. Or where prices are at. <clears throat> Hang on. Okay. Then, with the euro pound, as much as I was expecting it to push down, it's gone right back up. I'm going to ignore the euro pound now. I'm going to ignore the euro pound now because we're looking at all different variations and we'll remove that soon as well okay um dino is just sharing that um i would short the euro on higher time frame looks more bearish with the news we never know yep um naren says i see euro to the downside let's have a look on a higher time frame on the h4 <laughs> Keep it as our favorite. Um, on the H4, it's just, yeah, it's just at that level, right? So what I'm actually thinking, I would like to see the Euro test higher just because it would be, I wouldn't be so happy. I would trade it up. But I wouldn't be so happy to trade it up. I'd be more happy to try and sell it back down. And this at 1.12, would be a fantastic place to sell the euro back down as we've seen um, in August. All right, in August, and if you go to even bigger time frame, that's where it started pushing back down from. So I still like to see it test, but it is at that point where we've seen it test and reject in at the end of August, we've seen it test and reject in early September. It could very well, this is on a higher time frame, test and reject from this point. Um, I think I think a more likely scenario could be that it uh, hang on a second. This is again okay, reminder, this is on the H4 time frame. Take that. Let me clear these two things out first. I think a more a likely scenario, not more likely, a likely scenario would be it does this. It pushes up to that point. Right about that point. Um yeah, it pushes up to that point, and then comes right back down again. Or pushes up, test. Yeah, it pushes up, bounces around, and then pushes right back down again. But that's going to mean that we have to see massive dollar strength. Right? Massive dollar strength. Because the euro hasn't done too much, um, even if the ECB last week or a couple of weeks ago hasn't done too much. So for this to push all the way back down, it means that we're going to have to see that massive dollar strength come back into play. So again, it comes back down to you know maybe pushing down, and that would lead to the euro pushing up that way. Then after that, dollar climbing right back up with the euro dollar coming right back down again. That's on the H4 time frame. Takes a while to play out. But we might be seeing that. So the straddle could be a quick trade up and then the big long trade back down again. Okay. Um, on the euro pound, because it is our favorite trend line there, pushing down euro. Why? Okay, why we've seen that big candle to the relatively big candle to the downside is because we've seen the pound dollar pushing up, right? Pound dollar pushing up, euro pretty much 
sitting right across, not doing too much. So the euro pound has come right back down. And it's still within the Bollinger, it's retracing slightly right now. What we'll possibly want to look for on the euro pound is a, you see it's filling up that gap, no, not gap, but um, and that area there. We've seen that test push back down. What I think could happen here is push back up a little bit and then push back down again. Um, Naren said, miss the euro pound long. Are you talking about this area here? Last night or this point here? Just or quite a while ago? I still think that we're going to see it come down, maybe down to this trend line. Okay. Oh, yesterday. Okay, so that point there. Yeah, I see that coming back down. That trend line might hold it before it bounces back up again. If it bounces back up again, that would mean that either the pound dollar comes back down or the euro pushes up. I don't see the euro pushing up. Maybe that. Maybe that. Look at that. It's pushing up right now. So it's just sitting there. I'm looking for it to test that trend line there. I don't have any super clear view of what the euro pound could do. Okay. Um, Naren had it at 8415. Just missed it. It went to 8413. Uh, 18. Missed it by three pips. To push up. I think it's going to sit around there and then test a little bit lower to that trend line. Not super interesting for now. I think that again, pound, dollar, pushing up, test, low for the rejection. Euro, euro, dollar, possibly pushing up, looking for that straddle. I want to stay within that area. Dollar index still around that point. Then we look at the yen. All right, I'm super happy about this inverted head and shoulder that we were looking at. I don't need that point now. Take that away. Um, inverted head and shoulder that we were looking at broke above the resistance, above the trend line, pushed up. I did catch this. I caught it. I went in a little bit earlier. Speculative move. Um, if you caught that move, you would have about ninety pips. I think I got about hundred, just under hundred pips to that. Um, on that to the upside. Okay, so that's done. Take that away. Inverted head and shoulder still somewhat valid as it stays above that resistance now turned support level 141. All right, pushing back up again. Now that channel broken, so we can take that away. That one will keep. 38.2 might seem more relevant where it came up and tested. Yes. Take that away. Okay, so we had the inverted and shoulder on the yen. Now, what looks like could happen on the yen? Okay, so let me see. We had the dollar strength. This one we have the straddle. Let me change this a little bit. Sorry, just something I want to do. Um, buy or that or that. We we'll say this is a straddle. Okay. Then on the yen, we had that inverted head and shoulder, so that worked out. Didn't go all the way to one eighty pips to the upside, but we had that inverted head and shoulder. That is done now. As it sits there, I see that trying to push back up, trying to cross up on the US Yen. Resistance, interim resistance at this point here of 38.2. Right, and then I have 
So that's at 142, 50, we have 143. Okay. So now on the US yen, I'm thinking that we I'm thinking that we could see on dollar strength 142.80 stop loss or keep it tight no more than no more than 50 and take profit will be at 150 to the upside towards that 61.8 level right towards that point there on dollar strength i think 50 here is a bit we've seen it breaking around so that i wouldn't consider 50 too much i look at 161.8 push back up um, you have that supporting the move higher as well so we look for that to go up that way I like that actually hey Jamil how are you doing hey Machuku good to see you yeah okay 142.80 142.80, stop loss 50, take profit 150 to the upside. This is if we see DXY strength. Um, a DXY weakness scenario might have, I mean, we could still see that, but you want it to break the support at 141. Um, it could trade down to 139.80 or 140 that way you know there's a hundred pip move to the downside i think that that we're balancing out between the weakness scenarios and the strength scenarios i kind of like the idea that the us yen could push back up also that i am somewhat expecting and this is going a few days ahead i'm somewhat expecting the boj to disappoint could be, I mean, trying to anticipate what the BOJ will do or could do is really a stab in the duck. Um, it could be anything, but I'm anticipating that they could disappoint markets, not because, um, not because of anything, but because markets could be expecting some action. And the BOJ could just be like, no, that's, we've done quite a bit. Let's wait and see, right? The last, um, just in July, they, they had a rate hike already. And from what you've seen the last time would be that they did, you know, um, in March, they did a rate hike and they didn't do anything for two months, then took another action. So what I'm thinking is they might just go, let's wait and see, be a bit patient, be a bit more calculated, and um, see what happens <laughs> and also see what happens after the US possibly cutting rates right so I expect them to disappoint which could see the US yen reclaim some heights yeah I could see it retrace back higher I would like to see at 147 then hopefully sell it back down again um, so that's kind of, that's kind of how I plan out my my thoughts and anticipation for you know the long term the medium to long term uh Richard said I think that two b o j could disappoint yeah okay, so that's the yen we don't have the inverter and shoulder anymore well, it's still there, but we'll take that away okay there we go. Hey, look at that dollar now this hour trying to push down showing a bit of a red candle but yet on the us yen we're seeing that push up so it's a bit odd it looks like it's trying that upside potential okay then onto the euro yen we were looking for the test 
and rebound didn't happen. Take that away. Now, yen pushing up. Um, Euro dollar trying to push up as well. So, Euro yen pushing up. What you would be looking for if you wanted would be that it breaks the high and then the previous high and you could trade it up that way 100 pips up that way but i don't like that that much because we're thinking that your euro dollar sitting around there and then the yen pushing up what i want to see on the euro yen i would prefer is to sit it out and look for a reaction at this resistance level at 159.50 right because the last time came did that we had good reaction at that resistance level and let's test this 61.8 is right there that 50 percent so it's just in that area if you took this whole move there, you see 51 is right at that 159.50 level. Ideally, what we'll see is that the euro yen pushes up towards this level and then maybe the euro dollar could track it back down again. So it's up to that resistance of 159.50. Look for reaction there. We could have a Projection back down again. Okay. Or a break and a resumption back up. So it'd be that kind of move. But I think that it's going to be choppy around this area. Then onto the pound yen didn't break lower, pushing up. Reason is pushing up firstly. Again, yen trying to push up. And also the pound dollar pushing up. I'll move this a little bit to the side. Right, trying to push up towards that area. But we are looking for that counter trend move on pound. So on a pound yen, um, could test the resistance. I would like to see it test the resistance and turn back. Don't need that level. Look for that to break. Okay. And if you looked at this right down, again, you got that 50. It's coming up to that 38.2. See, it came up to 38.2. Tested, came back down, now pushing back up thinking that it could come up to the resistance level and then push back down again. No, it could do that as and reject back down. If the pound dollar does drive back down, right? We need the pound dollar to drive it back down because the yen, like we're talking about, could push up. So it's a bit conflicted right now on the pound yen. I think that short term is to the upside, but we do have a couple of levels that could drag it back down again. So at that point, what you're looking at is, um, you could be looking at 188.60 stop loss, uh, take profit at 120 stop loss about you know the stop loss the risk to reward is terrible you're looking at that kind of move or even tighter but i don't like it tighter i think it'd be about there not a great risk to reward i'd like to see a test and reject back down again so look for that reaction along the resistance level okay then on to the US Swiss franc push down. Testing this area. 
take that away. Now, if you look at this, oh, well, I should have taken it away, but I'm just looking at that. Now, at that point, dollar index still sitting right across. I'm thinking that this could sit across and push hmm, down. I'll still keep this view on the Swiss franc. 8420, stop loss 30, take profit 45 to the downside on dollar weakness. 8420, stop loss 30, take profit 45 on DXY weakness. Okay. Yeah. Not great. Not my favorite pair at this point. Um, but the US cat, the loony, all right, it's been attracted. It's been attracted to this 1.36 level, right? Since last week on Wednesday, we saw it test, well, even last week on Tuesday, we saw it test, bounced around this whole area through to this week, still in this area. Straddle, possible, but I want to actually think of, because if you look at it, in this area seems to be held. I want to actually think of a possible push to the downside, say 1.3560. Six zero stop loss can do about 20 take profit 50 to the downside towards that one point you could even go down not big difference 1.35 okay so that's what i'm looking for it's still ranging yes but we're looking for it to break that range Right, break that range to sell down at 1.3560. Stop loss 30, take profit 60. This again is on the XY weakness to the downside. Push down, yes, it's just sitting right across. So you want to be, that gives us a lot of space, gives us a lot of time. Um, a lot of the other trades are quite soon kiwi aussie or quite soon aussie might even trigger within the next couple of hours um pound dollar we're looking for test and reject euro dollar sitting right across this could give us a little bit more time for it to bounce around and to break down so it's not all the trades happening at one time firing out trades all across you have a couple of trades then close them out then you have a couple more trades to phase into okay then on to gold look at that it's still doing that so we were talking about this yesterday one uh 25 84 could trade higher to 26 100 we talked about that range it's still within the range it's currently at 25 71 um it's going to stay within this range. It's going to stay within this range. Most likely, or what I would like to see or anticipate is that we'll see it bounce around this range. Not that much. No, hang on. We'll see it bounce around this range in that area, pop up, test, and then hopefully turn back down again. So. One, it needs to break above, well, it could range between one, not one, could range between 25.70 and 25.90. And it looks like there are orders stacking up in that, for that direction. Um, could range between 25.70 and 25.90. Looking for a re for a test of 2600 and possible correction lower that's kind of what i'm thinking
right? Range, test 2600, and then correction lower back down again. Now, with all of that said, then we'll look at the pound CAD, I think. Yeah, pound CAD. We're talking about this retrace. So, yesterday we we're thinking that it's going to come up to 1.8 and come back down. The other thought was that it would retest. I think, Dino, you're looking at, I can't remember what the price was um, to retest. It pushed down. To that level, push down to that 38.2 level, and it's bouncing back up. Still within the Bollinger at this point. I don't need that trend line, or trend line would be something like that instead. There. Your order was at 1.7891. Seven one point seven eight nine one. Oh, so you got in. Yep. I'm looking at that. So did you did that trigger already? I guess that would have triggered for you. Pass and bounce. If you're in the trade already, I would say one point. I mean, that previous high would be would be where I would get out at. It could even be at that point. The short term fit level we're at fifty. It could get to sixty one point eight. I think in this area, what I'm thinking is that it could come back down and then do that again. Test that trend line. I think it could come back down and test. Um, I don't think it's worth, I know I'm gonna regret saying this, but I don't think it's worth holding on. Um, that 50, just because of this area here, just because of this area here, it looks a little bit tricky. So I would say, okay, what I think, if you have a position running, what I think is that, see how it reacts to this point. Right? Watch it at this point. If it clears this level, then yeah, we're going to see the next move. If it hesitates long here for a little while more, then we could see it retrace. But from the looks of it right now, it looks like it could push through. Does that make sense? Does that cover my basis? Um, on yeah, it could retrace, it could push up. But yeah, I think this area here right now is going to be a crucial point. If it breaks above this, then look for that. Right, it's testing. Uh, I'd say that area, if it breaks above, then you see that. If not, in this area, it could retrace before pushing back up again. Okay, now please remember if you are going to be trading the FOMC interest rates decision tonight, please trade well, trade safe. Don't feel like you have to rush into a trade. Don't feel like you have to enter a trade either. Um, I will be live trading that together with you guys at 2 p.m. or 2 a.m. GMT plus 8. I'm gonna be super lack of sleep, but let's go. Let's do it together. If you haven't already, check out the channel. Um, some of you are on the Market Explorer. You don't get the live stream on Market Explorer. You can get onto Elite Navigator. Don't ask me about the names. Why the names? But Elite Navigator, um, then you can join a live stream um, together with us. All right. So please trade well, trade safe. I will see you all in a few hours again. Take care now. Bye-bye.